Hello, and welcome to part three of our lecture series on the male reproductive system. And in part three, we're going to be taking a look at the accessory structures associated with the male reproductive system. And so we're going to start out with the accessory uh, genital glands. And so we'll be talking about uh, the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the vulvo-urethral gland. And then finally, uh, talking about uh, uh, the penile structure. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is with all regions of the male reproductive tract, testosterone is required for the proper functioning of these uh, organs. So if we take a look at the first of these, uh, the first is the seminal vesicles. Uh, if we take a look at the seminal vesicles, we're going to see an epithelial lining, uh, which is lined by a pseudostratified low columnar uh, epithelium. And so uh, it may look slightly uh, simple uh, columnar, um, but in a lot of regions, you're going to see the nuclei kind of staggered, kind of up and down, giving it an appearance that it may look like it's stratified. But again, keep in mind that what we've got here is a situation where all of the cells are sitting upon the basement membrane. All the cells are sitting upon the base lamina if we look at an electron microscopy. But some of the cells may not reach to the luminal surface. Uh, if we take a look at it at a lower magnification, like we've got in the bottom right, uh, we can see that the mucosa is highly folded. Uh, we can see kind of crypts and gland-like structures that we've seen previously uh, that gives it kind of an irregular appearance. Uh, the seminal vesicles are primarily going to be a secretory structure, and so the cells that are going to be lining the, the, the pseudostratified low columnar epithelial cells uh, are going to be secreting a product that has a variety of factors in it, but the probably the most important one is it's going to be very rich in fructose. Um, so essentially the, the sugar fructose um, it is going to make up about 70% of the total ejaculate uh, volume. And that's going to be important because, uh, as we talked about uh, two lectures ago, uh, the spermatozoa are going to have mitochondria that are going to be present within that circular collar. Uh, they're going to need uh, a sugar product uh, to, in essence, be metabolized uh, for the production of ATP so that the uh, flagella can continue to be uh, functioning. And so that fructose is going to be important for that, uh, that uh, function, for that component uh, of the delivery of the uh, spermatozoa uh, to uh, the region where they can fertilize the egg. Some reason this is skipping. Uh, the prostate gland is the second organ. Uh, we're going to talk about secretary, second accessory organ. Uh, if we take a look at this again, kind of a lower magnification to the top. Uh, we can see kind of a folded mucosa. Uh, the reason for that is that we're going to have again tubular alveolar glands similar to what we see uh, within uh, the mammary glands. Uh, if we look at this at a much higher magnification. What we're going to see again is a low pseudostratified columnar epithelia. Uh, in this case, it may be a little bit more obvious that it's pseudostratified columnar and may actually appear to be a little bit more columnar. And when we take a look at this, so again, it's different from uh, the simple cuboidal or simple columnar epithelia that you'll see in the mammary glands. Uh, in some regions of the prostate glands, you'll see uh, small glycoprotein spheres, essentially these. Uh, structures that accumulate within the lumens uh, that may become calcified and these are referred to as corpora amylacea, as uh, starchy bodies. And this is a, a diagnostic feature associated with the prostate gland. And so we can take a look at it, see the, the low pseudostratified columnar epithelia, see the corpora amylacea, and it's going to be a good indication that what you're looking at uh, is going to be the prostate gland. Uh, the bulbo-urethral glands uh, are also referred to as Cowper's glands. These are going to be uh, paired spirit glands. Um, they're going to have both smooth and skeletal muscle within the wall. Uh, and they're going to be involved with uh, essentially lubricating mucus uh, into the urethra. Again, in essence, hopefully uh, priming the urethra for uh, the delivery of the spermatocytes. Uh, the Cowper's glands are going to be lined by uh, a simple cuboidal uh, epithelium. Now the final structure we're going to take a look at with the male reproductive tract uh, is going to be the penis. Uh, within the penis, we've got two distinct regions we're going to be looking at. Uh, the corpora cavernosa. Uh, the ca corpora cavernosa are two cylinders, uh, uh, essentially two dorsal uh, kind of clusters 
of erectile tissue. And so you're going to see tissues with a lot of vascular sinuses are going to be present within it, um, like we've got uh, over here. Um, but the difference is that the corpora cavernosa uh, is going to be surrounded by a dense connective tissue, uh, tunica albuginea. And so we're going to have erectile tissue, we're going to have the vascular spaces, uh, similar to what we're seeing on the, the diagram, the micrograph to the right. But instead of kind of a, a loose connective tissue around the outside, what's going to happen is the corpora cavernosa is going to be surrounded by a dense connective tissue. And so that's going to form kind of a, a, a distinct a rigid boundary around uh, the corpora cavernosa. Now, in contrast, the other region is going to be the corpus uh, spongiosum. Uh, the corpus, uh, corpus uh, spongiosum is the same basic structure. Uh, we're still going to have uh, erectile tissue. We're still going to have these large vascular sinuses, uh, but it's going to be smaller. Uh, it's going to be located ventrally uh, within the anatomical structure of the penis. Uh, but instead of being surrounded by uh, the dense connective tissue of Virginia, it's going to be surrounded by a thinner, kind of looser connective tissue, a connective tissue that's not going to compress it uh, as those vascular sinuses become um, uh, filled. Now this is important because the corpus uh, spongiosum is going to be the region where the penile urethra is going to pass through it. And so what we're going to see on the next slide is that what happens during erection is that the vascular sinuses start to fill it causes an engorgement of these erectile tissues, which causes them to become compressed against that dense connective tissue tunic to albuginea. So it becomes a relatively rigid structure. Uh, we don't want that to occur around the penile urethra because if that becomes a, a rigid structure, becomes uh, kind of enlarged and engorged, it could essentially pinch off the penile urethra. And in doing that, uh, it would impede the flow of the materials through it, and it would essentially impede the delivery of the spermatozoa into the, the female reproductive system. Okay, so what we're looking at within uh, the penile structure, looking at the blood supply, is that in uh, a relaxed or flaccid penis, uh, there are arteri arterial venous shunts, which essentially allows the blood to pass uh, between the deep arteries and, and superficial veins. Uh, but during erection, what happens is that these arterial venous shunts close down. And what that means then is that blood is forced into the corpora cavernosa, where it's going to go into a series of helicine arteries, which are going to fill those vascular spaces. And so as those vascular sinuses, those vascular uh, spaces uh, start to fill, it's going to be cause the erectile tissue to become engorged. And uh, what happens then is that sudden filling of the lacuna, sudden, sudden filling of these vascular spaces, uh, has an ability to block the veins that are draining them. And so what happens then is, in essence, you fill them up and block off the drainage site, and so they continue to be maintained. Uh, the blood, uh, blood, uh, blood volume uh, is maintained within those vascular sinuses, it engorges the erectile tissue, uh, that you know, engorged erectile tissue pushes up against the tunica albuginea, that dense connective tissue around it, and it causes the, the penis to become erect or essentially a more rigid uh, structure. Uh, and again, that's uh, triggered by a variety of factors. Um, and that's involved with delivery of the spermatozoa uh, into uh, the female reproductive tract. Uh, that finishes up our discussion of the male reproductive system. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at hawkmanj at arcadia.edu. Thank you.